In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to create a FileMaker summary report that converts data from this into something like this. Hey, what is up everybody? Welcome to another FileMaker beginner tutorial. My name is Sunny Chu and today we are going to learn how to create a sales summary report that is able to take data that is spread all across the place and group them together in one visual piece and summarize the information within them like this. So comparing to this approach on the left, the right side approach is much more visual and it's much easier for you to make decisions based on these information. So without further ado, let's get started. Let me close off this um, after file for a bit and I want to introduce to you to this file. So basically again, this file is extremely simple and it's basically a one table layout with uh, four fields, which is um, the date, the product, the category and the price. It should be pretty self-explanatory. So like iPhone S is under the category of phone, MacBook Pro under category of desktop and I have a few items under each category. So we can play around with the data a little bit to understand better. The first thing I want to do is to um, show you how that um, grouping mechanics work. So basically this grouping mechanics here. And what you need to learn is something called sub summary layout parts. Now before I get into that, what I want to show you is um, just to give you a little bit idea of what that is about. So when we are talking about grouping up data like this, essentially grouping data is just sorting. So if I want to group up all the phone data together, what I want to do is to sort and sort them by the category, click OK. And you will notice that all the desktop data in here are grouped together, all the laptop data in one place and also all the phone data is also in one place. So that's basically the mechanics behind grouping. But what we want to do is to make it more visual. So that's when the part um, that's called subsummary layout part comes in. So let's go to layout mode and I want to go to insert part. And I assume you already know the layout parts that is header and also body in here already. So I'm not going to get too much into it. But let's create a subsummary um, part when sorted by category. Click OK. And I want to click print above. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to type in a little bit of text here so that um, you can understand better what is taking place here. So I'm just going to type in the flat text and call this subsummary layout part like this so that you will know exactly what this part does when I run it in browse mode. So let's go to browse mode. Now you will realize that I have a subsummary layout part for all the desktop record like this on the top here. And when it's sorted by laptop, it's under another subsummary layout part. And then again, phone and other subsummary layout part. So basically, this is kind of like a um, group separator that is uh, based on your sorting criteria. Now, it's very important to note that when you unsort this back to the original state, this subsummary layout part will not work. Or if you sort it by something else, for example, our subsummary layout part was uh, triggered by category. But if I sort it by product like this, it's not going to appear unless I go um, sorted by category and then product, click sort, then this is going to trigger. So essentially what is happening is that when I create this subsummary layout part, this thing here means that I want to trigger this part whenever I sort my record by the category. That's basically what it means on the back end. And so let's move on to the next part. I want to display the data. I don't, I don't want to just display the text that's called subsummary layout part. And it's actually pretty easy to, to get this right. So let's, um, well, I'm going to leave this here just for um, let you understand better what's happening. But what I want to do is, since this is a subsummary layout part sorted by category, I want to place my category field 
into this part here and I want to click onto the bolt button like this go to browse mode and you'll realize that this time I'm able to show all the desktop item and show it in here um, under the same group so I want to move on to the next part which is to summarize all these number data into a total so let's um, unsort everything first and what I want to show you now is something called a summary view. So if I go to File, Manage, Database, I want to create a summary view. Let's call it um, Total. And the type, I want to select Summary and click OK. And so it's going to ask me what type of summary do I want. And I have a bunch of options to choose from. I have Total, Average, Count, Max, Min, and things like that. But Basically, what I want now is a total of the price. Click OK and go back to layout mode and I'm going to copy this price view, paste it on the top part here inside the header body part and I'm going to double click onto it to change to my new newly created total summary view. So if I go to browse mode right now, you will notice that I have much more um, a bigger number on this view here. That's because this is um, a few that is able to add up all my existing file record and place it into this summary view. So it's basically a, a way to calculate um, the total amount, just like the formula in Excel. Now, the cool thing about this thing is that it's not going to um, just stay static like this. This is a dynamic data. So for example, if I search by desktop, so I'm making my found count less, I'm only showing, showing like 17 records out of the 50. Now you'll realize that this number has um, changed depending on the found count that I have. So basically, the summary field is going to summarize whatever that you found in your current found set. That's one thing really important. Now, what happened when we group together the summary field and also the sub summary layout part in here? So um, let me just move this a little bit and let me copy and paste. So when I group them together and let's sort them by category and then product again, you will, oops, one second, show all record first and then sort them. And you'll realize that in here that the desktop has this amount of price in here. And then the laptop have um, this total amount that summarizes these data here and then the phone has this amount here so when you place a summary field inside a sub summary layout part it is able to accurately determine the total amount for that particular group so that's something that it's very important because we are going to use that to create our sales report so if you look into the final version of what i have in here you will notice that um, I have a header on here, which is the grouping. And then I also have the information on the bottom. So how do I put this pricing information from the top to the bottom? Now, what you can do is that you can actually create two sub summary layout part. So if I go to insert and then part again in here and create a sub summary layout part when sorted by category, click like this, print below. You will notice that I have a top part here and a bottom part here. If I double click onto the top part, it's sorted by category. And if I double click into the bottom part, it's also sorted by category. So what I want to show you is, um, I want to show you something like this. So summary, um, top part, and lower part, just to give you an idea of what is happening. And I'm going to duplicate this category again onto the bottom part. And let's click browse mode and see what happens. So um, when I have a found set that is sorted with a top and a bottom part, you will notice that desktop is able to show on the top part in here. As well as desktop, it's able to show on the lower part. And then once it goes through this, it goes to the next grouping section, which is the laptop with the top parts here and the laptop with the lower part here. So you can actually have a, a top and a bottom sub summary layout part which is very useful for creating a clear structure in here like this that can uh, kind of give you that logical sense of adding number from top to bottom 
and you get a total in here. And so that's the concept behind it. So let's remove these two of them and then put the total from top to the bottom. And let's just remove this for now. Let's go into browse mode and see what happens. So if I go to browse mode now, you will realize that I have a desktop in here and then it's able to summarize all the information and group the total onto the bottom in here like this. Same with laptop and same with the phone. So overall, it's working pretty well. Now, of course, comparing to this version here, it's looking not as clean, but it just takes a little bit of time for you to um, adjust the styling to get what you want. And let's focus back onto the mechanics of how to work on this uh, sub summary layout part. Now, if you compare the desktop data I have here and compare my, um, I mean, my sales order record I have here and compare it to my sales report in here, you will notice that um, we are sorting by different things. In here, it's just flat out sorting by category. But in this sales report in here, I have uh, sorted by the month of the date. So this is a little bit more of an advanced technique of what you can do with subsummary layout part. And it's very useful in a lot of uh, different ways. And so I want to show you how to do this. So basically, what I need to do is I want to sort it by the date. But the problem is, let me show you. If I change this to sort by the date and change this to also sort by the date and I switch in the date field to here and then do this, it's going to have a little bit of problem. So if I sort it now, delete this, sort it by date, you will notice that the subsummary layout part, it's grouping for every single day instead of every single month. And it's not a very useful report and it's probably going to create more confusion than helping you to clarify the data like this here. But what, the, what is happening is that we cannot just sort by the date. We need to sort by the month. So in order to do that, we need to create some sort of method to get the month and then sort by the month instead. This is where we need to create some sort of a calculation field. So let's go back to a uh, file manage database back into this layout here. And I want to create a quick calculation that is going to convert my date into a month information. So let's um, do call this a month. And I want to have a calculation field. Now, what I can do is that I already have the date information inside this field here. There's a function that's called month name that I can place in the date inside it and get the month name of this specific date. Now, of course, there's also a month and then there's also a year. There's also day, which help you to isolate the month, the year and the day for when you put in a full date inside the function. And so let's um, just stick with um, the month name for now and make sure the calculation result is text because the month name is the English text version, which is a January, February, March, and things like that. So click OK, click OK again. And let me just show you what's happening on the back end. Um, if I go here now and just give it a little bit more, more space, category, and let me double click onto this, make select month and place it on the first row like this and let's unsort this because the um, sub summary layout part is getting a bit confusing. Now you realize in here that I'm able to successfully get the month into this month name here and this is the first step. We create a calculation to get the month from the date so that now we have something that is actually uh, more practical to group with. So next step, same thing. We are going to change the subsummary layout part. Instead of grouping by date, we want to group by the month. Same thing goes to the bottom. And we are going to copy and paste the month name on top here and do this. And let's see what happens. So if I click onto browse mode right now, and let's uh, sort this by, oops, by month like this, click sort. You will realize that now 
it's all grouped up by the month. So it's now it's a very nice uh, sales report that is able to group up uh, each month's sales record and place it into a total in here. But there's one thing that is uh, a little bit strange that is within this report. I'm not sure if you were spot out already. But if you look at the month, right now, this is April, this is December, and then this is February. It's not in the perfect sequence. And there is a reason why. And that's because when we are sorting by the month name, for example, currently we are sorting by the month, we are sorting by ascending order. So basically it's uh, treating this as an alphabet, like A first, D, F, and J. So that's why it's sorting in this weird order. And to fix this, we want to create some sort of a value list to sort in a custom sort of way. So go to File, Manage, Value List, and I've already created a, um, a month name value list in here, which starts from January, February, March, April, all the way to December, the correct way. So um, I just need to select this, and let's, uh, when I sort this, instead of sorting by ascending order, I'm gonna sort by custom order based on the month name. And when I sort, we have January on top, March, April, and etc. etc. So that's the whole concept behind this uh, subsummary thing. Now, there's one small change that I can make to make this report look a little bit better, and that is to add this indent area in here. Because um, usually, if we add an indent here, people can easily identify that this thing is um, under this specific category. So let's just quickly do that to round up this tutorial. And let's move it, move it here, give it a little bit of an indent. I'm not going to worry too much about the coloring of this report because um, that's not the full focus of uh, what we are about in here. And let's just do this. And let's see what happens. So now you can see we are able to create a um, summarized report that is able to group up January and its total amount, March, total amount, and all the other month um, accordingly. So that's basically it for this tutorial. And if you want to download this sample file that I've been working on in this tutorial, it's just right there in the link in the description down below, along with other Filemaker resources. And um, this is a very nice technique and I highly recommend you to learn it because it's super easy to create and um, there's a lot of things that you can do with it. And um, that's it. I guess I will see you on the next tutorial.